hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Colchester Creek Spiel with me Dave Pumphouse. Oh, Lord Capel has taken command of the Royalist forces after the Earl of Norwich has unfortunately been shot off his horse and killed. What's Lord Capel going to do? Well, he, he's made the right decision. He has uh, decided to withdraw his troops through the Balkan Gate and uh, he, he's also ordered uh, his, his men to, to do so and he has actually messaged George Lyle in order to do so as well however I think George Lyle is of the opinion that he's in a favorable position and, and not losing too many men they're getting a, they're getting a little bit beaten up and, and, and shocked but um, yeah, he he's not budging. He's 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 like, I'll cover your retreat. It's like, dude, get out of there. You, you, it's becoming untenable. Um, it, it's kind of lucky that uh, Barkstead hasn't pushed them because he's of the opinion that uh, he's not going to do much damage to them anyway. Uh, the damage it would seem is is going to come from these cannons. However, Delborough has told the cannons to concentrate on Colonel Bowman here. Uh, so that's that's a fun one. And you've got these this cavalry not doing anything. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe try and prompt George Lyle as to you know what he, what what does he want to do. Uh, Lucas has made it to Castle Park. He's he's probably going to rally all of the cavalry and do some kind of glorious cavalry charge um, try, try and muster the troops uh, we'll, we'll tell him that he sees Slingby and Compton uh, this turn and also some of Colonel Culpepper who, who's watching the uh, eastern, eastern gate but um, Capel was asked Slingby and Compton and his own horse to to come over to St Mary's. Um, now, what's that gonna do? I, I don't know. I, I is he gonna try and sally out and try and beat them off that way? I I don't know. Everyone seems to be a little bit lost. Uh, Fairfax has moved back up. Um, he, he's kind of dragging these guys along with him, but they're, they're still dis disorganised and and uh, not very. A cohesive unit. They'll probably merge into one into in a turn or two once they've kind of got themselves together and remustered. Um, he's also asked the artillery gunners that were milling around these houses to, to come back, which is wise. Um, and then he's probably going to try and beat down the headgate and uh, and and make a making an inroads uh, towards it. But um, it's not much fighting to be had um, at the moment because people are disengaging, they're pulling off, it's mainly over in the south, so let's let's try and figure what we're going to do with that one. Uh, we've got some long range fighting between Bowman and uh, the Tower Regiment number two. Let's, let's do that. Four and a f five and a one, jeez, okay. Yeah, they're being outgunned, being outmatched. Uh, the artillery ba battery is uh, also in range. Um, Delborough has actually moved forward with his cavalry. He, he, he knows that there's this cavalry on the corner that's um, not doing anything, so he's kind of wary about where to engage his troops. So yeah, the battery is going to fire at um, 300. At good effect with the damage of two they'll, they'll, they'll feel it but they won't necessarily do much about it uh, these houses long range into uh, I want to say town regiment number two let's, uh, let's do that or four okay not, not bad Colonel Farr is going to um, shoot again at uh, long range into Barkster's regiment with a 
four. Fair enough. These two are going to fire back. Again at long range. Six and a four. And then we come to these fellas. Right. Actually, probably need to include box of number three there as well. Oh shit, so that's a six and a three versus a two and a three. Ouchie. And that will be at, um, looks like effective range, that's about uh, 100, 100 meters or so. So they're gonna they're gonna get it. Oh, actually, you know what? Charles Lucas is probably gonna fire as well. Um, he's probably gonna concentrate on on firing at um, at Barksteads as uh, there as well. So let's let's include Charles Lucas's regiment. They're si they've been sitting up there. They're they're, they're not they're not gonna be uh, fatigued anymore. Ooh, that's a six at. Um, you know what? Yeah, we've got 120. So that's that's going to do some that's going to do some damage. Barkster's number three is going to come in. He's going to shoot into Gilbert. And do a three at uh, effective range, I would say. Yeah. Um, so he's come online, um, but everyone else is not really doing anything. So that's that's the scores on the draws, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we'll. Come, come back at you. Well, the biggest thing to talk about uh, after those rolls is again the south and the headgate. I think the royalists will hold the headgate fairly, fairly well, actually. Um, Barkstead's regiment coming in there and and being fairly fresh, even though that yeah you know, they're they're a little bit exhausted after uh, dispatching Goring's cavalry. Are uh, coming online and firing into their flanks. They would have retreated into the headgate next turn, not without disruption. And then we'll have the Parliament, you know, saying that we're not going to get shot here by Charles Lucas's regiment. We're just going to come and settle on online here. Colonel Farr has suffered a little bit of damage. He's probably going to report to George Lyle and say, look, we can't stay here, so we need to get out. We need to try and make a break for the head gate ourselves or, or, or the Balkan gate or something. Where's, where's your decision going? We, we can't stay here and get peppered by the cannons. Delbra is coming into his own. He's, he's picking up his, his troops. He's going to be causing damage too to George Lyle. I think if George Lyle doesn't understand his position now, he he soon soon will be. And then we have to ask what Honeywood is going to going to do, and if he's going to coordinate his attack with with Gordon. I think George Lyle is um, no uh, Charles Lucas rather is is and his character is is thinking of doing something. Um, uh, it's quite enjoyable to see the way he sees things and uh, how he wants to go out in a blaze of glory he's, he's certainly been a highlight for, for the play so far but the game is winding down I think uh, if if Parliament with their orders just decides that they're gonna gonna camp and uh, block the roads I I, I think um, I think we'll call this one a, a draw. Certainly a, a a tactical victory for the Parliament if if we do go down that way. But uh, a strategic one for the Royalists because their job is to to tie up as many people as as they can if they can't escape. And then you've got six thousand men that could be. Up fighting in the north of England, they've they've done their job. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe p p players will uh, want to continue. Uh, maybe Parliament will certainly want to breach one of these gates. We'll we'll have to see. But uh, until then, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you on the next one. Ciao for now.